off to work in the morning. I gotta open up. Can't make no noise in the house, bro. It's like you gotta be able to float like a ghost. Can't make no noise. She's already threatening to kick me out again because I wake up. I'm trying to make myself a lunch. She's really pushing me to the edge. Anyway, shout out my sister. She bought me a umbrella. <laughs> I told her I didn't need one. It doesn't even rain much in California or Los Angeles, but she insisted. Man, it's pretty difficult. Just trying to get up and just live. I couldn't even brush my fucking teeth. Anyway. I had a blocker on my phone because I know she's going to attack me with text messages. So I had a blocker before she could affect me. She tried to ruin my day. God. You know, life's a double-edged sword, you know? Yesterday when I was on the bus going to work, there was these two young ladies there. Could have been a little younger than me, around my age. They were either in their middle 20s or early 30s. And they were both in wheelchairs, you know. One was heavier, and the other one was particularly skinny, you know. But they were rolling together, you know. They, I guess they're friends because they both understood each other, you know. Both bound to wheelchairs and Oh, uh, you could tell, you could tell, you know, the way the bus driver was being extra nice, you know. I don't know if you would call the sympathy or compassion. A lot of times people just want to be treated normal. But, um, I, was, I was sitting on, right, right behind them, you know. I was on the bus before them, so I was able to see. I was able to see how the bus driver was just being extra kind to them. and um, You know, as a bus driver I had to get up and accommodate them, you know, strap them in, make space for them in their designated area. And uh, I'm sure it's difficult for them. I'm sure the overweight one eats to comfort herself. I'm sure, I don't know, in silence, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of sorrow there. I'm sure they question God and I'm sure they're pretty hardened, you know. Tough, no doubt, you know. So, I don't know. I'm just feeling from, like I said, there's a double edged sword, you know. They get benefits. Uh, like I said, the world has compassion on them. You don't have to guess or you don't have to really know them to know that something's wrong with them. You just look at them, you know. Strangers give them sympathy and compassion. But for others who struggle, you know, internally, who never let things be heard, like who hears that, you know? Who has compassion on them? So I so said things are, there's a double-edged sword there, you know? So don't, don't take for granted your the ability to walk. Oh. Um, so they seem like very tough females, you know? I'm sure they could have a good conversation. I'm sure they have a lot of ideas about the world. But, um, there's this older woman, she's an older lady who works in the paint department at my job. And she's actually very beautiful. She has a sweet personality, you know. She also has this one eye. I don't know if she's blind from it. I don't know if she was born that way. But it it does seem like it's damaged, you know. It is damaged, actually. And, you know, she has to struggle with people looking at her. Also feeling sorry for her. For that uncomfortable feeling of them noticing it. And 
Yeah, I want to talk to her. I want to get to know her. I want to know if she's always been that way, if she was born that way. It seems like her eye is damaged, so something that may have occurred during her life. Like maybe she, not maybe, well, seems as if she was once living a normal, regular life in the outer appearance portion of it, I guess. And I don't know how that has affected her. I want to ask her, honestly, because, you know, the way that I was made fun of, you know, for my physical deficiencies or irregular irregularities, you know, as kids used to make fun of me. And kids only speak their mind, you know, they speak honestly, even if it's harsh. And the way they called me on my name, you know, I feel as if, it's okay for me to open these dialogues with these people with handicaps and deformities, I guess you could say. And um, I want to ask that lady at the paint department, I see her a lot. And yesterday we actually had a good conversation. Just kind of made her laugh a little bit and just kind of, we're becoming friends, you know. And I want to ask her, hey, is life hard for you? You know, is it difficult? Then open up the conversation and kind of ask like how it happened. If she was born that way with her eye damaged. And just if it's been hard for her. Because I'm sure if I didn't go through, you know, those moments, those, that, that moment in my life of humiliation and belittlement and destruction of my self-esteem and the creation of my self-awareness and self-consciousness i'm sure like these little fucking episodes my mom has i would just be cool and just know how to like even communicate with my mom but i feel as if i'm just being i was sucked in from all angles but now like the way i look i just i'm accepting of it um I'm still self-conscious and struggling with confidence and it has created a, an abundance of anger and you know, let my, my let my life down to a lot of mistakes and created a the person that I am today. But so if like what the fuck the mom who doesn't know how to talk and just bitter if like I'm just being fucking extra suffocated and like I said, but if one or the other didn't occur. I wouldn't be so triggered, you know? But with the fucked up adolescence, I created so much anger, just, just my mom being on my back all the time just really, really, really makes me angry. And, um, uh, so, anyway, I wanna talk to that lady at the paint department. Now, I'm like a person, like, I, I become shallow, you know, because of the early sexual encounters that I had. I love beautiful women, you know. I love attractive women, but also being made fun of, I have a love for all women on a personal note. You know, like, there's this overweight young lady at my job who, like, I don't know, I just, I, I went to her department to look for, like, another person. I had, like, free time, you know, it was very slow yesterday at work. So I had free time and I am just kind of like encountering her and just talking. And she seems like a really cool young lady and uh, actually she's pretty over, she's actually pretty overweight and she's actually like a big, a big human, you know, she's tall, she's, you know, seems very thick and strong. And like I have this song that I'm making. It's like inspired by my daughter, but just, inspired by my heart to make songs for people that they could feel okay and just, I don't know, for those who don't have a voice, I guess. And then I usually screenshot these instrumentals that I get from YouTube. And so there was a, a pretty, there was a, like a decent silent gap, like a good five seconds before the, you hear any sound actually. And I had an idea, I wanted a female to use her voice and just to say this little, just to say something. I already know what I wanted to say, so 
when I was clocking out, she was going on break. So then I started talking to her again. And like my heart was like, man, she's attractive. Like, like she's a big girl, but I want to make her feel special. You know, I want to tell her like she's beautiful. You know, so she could believe in herself, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, uh, it's not, I'm shallow, but I was like, I just noticed the things that people notice in themselves, you know, like, you know how we're wearing masks now. Like, I notice a woman with beautiful eyes, but she may take off the mask and she may have funny teeth or she may have a funny nose. And I notice when they're self conscious about it. And I feel like that brings me a sense of anxiety too. And I feel like they can notice. Like, there was a girl, a couple of women, who they might not be the most attractive in the face, but. You know, when they wear the mask, it's kind of deceiving. And I, like, like that bothers me. It's like, I like, I don't really wanna, it's like, I don't know. I just get real nervous. When I feel like they notice that I notice, I don't know, maybe where their, their uh, insecurities are and maybe they think I'm an asshole, but they don't know my story It's just, <clears throat> you know, it's like, why, why am I always wearing a hat, you know? Or, I wear a hat because of my hairline. Even though I have a big head, I could have had a decent hairline, but it gets too much stress. I took all my hair away. So, yeah. There was a couple of moments yesterday where a couple of females that I work with, uh, not the most beautiful. Like, I hate ugly because I hate how it makes people feel. It's only because we live in a mirror world, a mirror world where these people do vlogs and they just, they just look at themselves in the camera. And it's kind of fucking, makes me feel gay, like, not gay, but it makes me feel uh, like cringy, you know? Like when you see people do their vlogs and looking at themselves. That's why I'm trying just to do it from the, the small lens now, but uh, you know, you just see it like the sociopathic society we live in, the narcissism. And, um, I don't know, but um, I wanted to open up the conversation about f celebrity and fame. And, I don't know, I think people are really fucking sad and lonely. Like our phones, I said we live in a mirror world. Like I even noticed that my daughter is like staring at the mirror a lot at herself. Like, how the fuck did she learn this? She's only four years old. Like, you know, like I said, I could, I could hear the resemblance and the mannerisms of like her, her little, her young tias, her young aunties that she has. And maybe she sees them in the mirror, you know, doing their hair. She obviously probably sees her mom doing her funny makeup. And I hate makeup, man. I really do. I think women, it's because they have a couple of pimples, they cover up their face with makeup and it even looks worse. Like the makeup, don't, the pimples don't even go away. I don't know, this, that makeup is ugly. I hate makeup. I'm sure it enhances them, but I don't know. I hate makeup. I really do. Like my daughter got makeup for Christmas. But I did bite my tongue. I didn't talk shit like I wanted to, but she's gonna get older and we're obviously gonna have a conversation. But yeah, so. So we live in a world that is fucked up and it's all about beauty. I even thought about those ladies in wheelchairs, like them not being able to have sex if they can't, you know? That just like fucking. That's such a big part of what a man wants that just totally wiping that out, you know? But I think that um, they could find a good relationship where there's been someone like in the same situation as them, where they could have that, they can have that an intellectual relationship, you know? That's about conversation. That's about, um, I think this is this fool's fucking car. So he's looking at me funny. I don't give a fuck about his car. Yeah, as long as. They're willing to have that relationship, that intellectual relationship. Don't worry, I don't care about your car. He's looking at me like I give a fuck. But um, I'm just trying to talk. I don't give a fuck about that fool's car. Just trying to talk, not around people. 
But yeah, so anyway, I gotta get my coffee now. And that was just my day. Fucking lady already talking shit to me. Probably trying to text me right now. Get the fuck out of here. I heard her talking to my stepdad. He needs to leave. Like, she's a fucking... So sad. It's so sad, man. Even how I feel about her is just so sad. Peace. And fuck my enemies who love that. This is the shit that I go through. Fuck you. The ones that say, oh, how old is he? How old is he? Yeah, fuck you. You don't know my life, you fucking pussies. So my Uber is a Tesla. First time I'll ever get in a Tesla in my life. It's gonna be cool. The prices right now have dropped exponentially. It went from like $15 to like seven and a half, eight bucks. So it's a $7 difference. So it's not bad actually. Probably because the new year, it's not the holiday month. I'm trying to get this shit cut early, man. <laughs> So I knew I, would, I knew I would be tired, you know? I got off of work at six yesterday. By the time I get out at the bus, I get back at 7.30, had to go to the market, you know? Whatever, my brother fucking waits till I get to the, he doesn't, I guess he didn't know I had to go to work this early in the morning, but I mean, we don't talk. My family's fucking shit, but I fucking, you know, he waits till I get home, then he decides to take a sh use the restroom, you know, it's like, bro, he's been there all the fucking day, and I don't know, it's just fucking inconvenient, he's, he, he did, you know, you know, when you go to jail, you fucking make sure you wipe down the sink, and you make sure you wipe your fucking ass shavings, when you wipe your ass with toilet paper, I guess, that gets left on the fucking toilet seat, you know, he, he's, he doesn't know, he's, he fucking has those, uh, those bad manias, you know, habits or whatever, and, uh, Anyway, it's fucking ir irritating, but he doesn't know, you know. Anyway, like, I mean, even if you knew someone got home from work, you'd be like, you know what? I should, let me just wait because I've been here all fucking day, you know. I, I think that way, you know. I want to just, oh, oh, let me go race to the restroom, you know, even though I've fucking been there all day. And, um. I just wish he had more confidence and wouldn't just be a fucking pothead, you know? Wish he had more confidence in himself. But, um, maybe he does have confidence, maybe he doesn't give a fuck, you know? So I knew I'd be tired, you know? I knew, I knew, I, like, I went to bed at 10. I knew I would have only get, like, four hours of sleep. I, I knew that already. Four and a half, you know? Five, whatever. So, but I was accepting. I want to be at work at a mellow mood, you know? It's cool. I'm tired. I'll be in a mellow mood, you know? The hardest part of my day would be when I get out and have to go for my run, knowing that I'm tired. But now the hardest part is going to be is fucking having to go back there and deal with my fucking... Like, having to come to work not knowing if I'm going to get kicked out, you know? By my own fucking mom. Who's, it's unnecessary, man. She, she thinks she makes it better by fucking screaming from the distance she's at outside of the door to her room. Just fucking get your shit and get out. Like, like, you're making it fucking worse. Like, what's the logic in that? It's not even logical. That's just you going off your own emotion. That's just being fucking selfish. Don't talk to me about God. Don't talk to me about none of that phony bullshit. That's fucking phony, man. Like I said, people just want to do God because they have their own fear inside of them, their own anger, their own fucking destruction. You know, when they're face to face with people, you know, the shit they have to control, you know, their own fear of their own like inside of them you know their own anxiousness their own trauma you know it's, it's all a personal relationship so it's a personal relationship with god yeah fucking i don't want to hear none of that bullshit you know and um yeah, there was even some fucking crackhead lady yesterday at the bus stop speaking in spanish saying el diablo like, i'm not gonna let that get in my head like no bitch she's not fucking speaking from the third perspective or like no, I'm not fucking evil. I'm, I'm a fucking good person, man. Everything I dealt with, everything I submerge, like fucking still getting attacked and this ugly feeling I have to deal with, like, first of all, these fucking people who are your coworkers or your peers who it's like, motherfucker, you don't know what I've been through, motherfucker. What are you judging me for, you dumb fuck? So I'm going to have to deal with that. 
I actually like when the customers come in. I'm, a, I, you know, I, I like, I, I look forward to these encounters of, of the good customers, you know, and helping them solve their little plumbing issues that they have. And I like guess an ugly feeling, like, like having to, see, like, fucking be afraid of getting kicked out, or just her hearing her fucking nails on a chalkboard voice. You know, I just fucking can't stand it, man. I really can't. It's ugly, bro. And um, I miss my daughter and like. It just it kills me man if i think about her too much just the fact that like i don't know i feel like a shitty dad you know but, but like at the end of the day <clears throat> At the end of the day, like who I am and most of like what I've done. Or, like what I've been through, like, ain't really my fault, you know? So. That's why I could, I could proudly say fuck my enemies, you know? Fuck the people who judge me because I don't give a fuck. You guys are pussies anyway. I haven't been through half the shit I've been through, you know? But, um... I don't know. I probably have some enemies I've been through a lot too, you know? But it is what it is. Maybe we could be friends, but... Yeah. But, um... I saw, like... If I was like 50, I'll be homeless. I don't give a fuck. I'll be 50 living fucking homeless. I'll be around fucking young other homeless people. They'll probably rob me. Who gives a fuck? But right now being this age, these homeless people are as stupid as the fucking normal civilian people. They, they judge you just the same. They'll rob you and beat you up because, you know, they feel threatened by you. But, I mean, they beat up older people because they're bullies too. But, you know, it's like... If I'm 50 or 60, it's like, ah, fuck it. Just be glad you're alive, you know, in your little fucking corner. But right now I'm 30. I'm still a dreamer, you know. I want to see the world. I want to fucking have at least... I feel like I still am able to have a, you know, have the abilities to have a relationship with a, a beautiful someone, you know. I'm sure I could get in a relationship when I'm 50. Once I'm accepting to the fact that we have to accept each other's past and just be grateful... But right now, I feel like I, 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 still have to, I still should do that now, you know? But like I said, I still feel like I have the abilities to have a woman that I like, you know? And not have to really settle too much, you know? And um, so, I don't know. I mean... The only other place I would like to move to... I mean, I guess you could say I'm scared, you know, to have to go... Like, I don't know start new and like go rent a room somewhere i don't know i just don't feel have the support system you know i wouldn't mind like renting a room from my, my biological father he did have two homes but he fucking cheated on his wife and you know she didn't love him enough she she was she was happy that he made a mistake so that way she could in court look look like the victor you know look like the better person and she he had two houses, one he lived in that he fixed up beautifully. He's had that house for so so long and he fixed it up beautifully. And then he had one income property where he rented it out to like, you know, every room to a single person, you know. But now he lives there because he, he fucking made the decision to cheat on his wife. Now he has to live there and she took this house, his beautiful house that I'm sure he still wishes he had. And now he has to live over there in that income property. I wouldn't mind living there. I don't really care to be around the guy, but my, my, I made a video talking about my past and shit, and, my, and like where I come from. And my sister insinuated, like, "Oh, you know, you, the doors are always open over there, even though um, you express certain things." I'm like, "What the fuck? Why the fuck should I give a fuck how he feels about what I express? Like, she shouldn't have fucking said that. That shit pisses me off, man." Like, what the fuck? That sounds fucking stupid. You're mad at me for expressing what the fuck I feel? Dumb fuck. These are my truths, you stupid fuck. 
Anyway, I'll probably be homeless again. Cause I, I can't even bite my tongue around that fucking lady. When she was talking shit to me today, I kept I kept saying fucking cry, baby. Like shut the fuck up, you fucking weirdo, fucking bitch. Like I was saying this shit out loud. I don't know if she heard me. And like I said, the fucking walls are thin. I could hear everything they fucking do, and obviously she she, she could hear everything, every little squeak I make. So I was a few octaves away from fucking easily being heard and I was pushing the envelope right there I don't know she's fucking so annoying I don't know I hate when my sister says oh you you know God God wants you to respect your like shut the fuck up that's why you don't even fucking live there like these people haven't been through shit that I've been through man I'm telling you man me, my, my, my confidence being killed as a boy that just fucked me over so much and look at me, I have a fucking job. And the nerve of my mom saying, it's fucking 3.30 in the morning. Yes, I'm trying to go to fucking work. Like, it's just an ugly feeling, man. Ugly feeling. And like I said, man, they wouldn't understand if I fucking finally snapped. They wouldn't understand. The fucking hypocrites in jail. These fucking hypocrite law enforcement. Hypocrite fucking judicial system. They'll just feed me to the lions in there. Not even lions, the fucking hyenas. They'll just feed me to those fucks. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta work right now. Peace. It's funny how I was talking shit about Elon Musk and the algorithm sent me a Tesla. I mean, it was a, like one of the cars. It was like a one of the smaller cars, Tesla. Not dissing them at all. It was beautiful, actually, but I didn't feel no difference. Like it has pretty cool like screen in the front, you know. And like I said, beautiful leather seats. But did I feel like I was in a fucking spaceship? Not really, you know. I'm sure that big one, the big body one with the fucking that the doors open like Lamborghini doors, or the ones that open like wings and shit. I'm sure that one feels a little different, but. It's just funny how they sent me a Tesla. <laughs> Algorithms. Today, I really gotta live by speak less, listen more. <sighs> Cause I'm irritable right now and anxious, you know, just because of the level of aggression in the morning that, uh, you know, was awoken in me and also what I just express right now, stuff. So I just don't want to affect nobody here and be anxious around them or go, you know, be defensive from one individual to the next. So I can't beat time and still alive and breathe. I'm gonna pee really bad. Just my luck, my brother. The custodian's pretty much at Home Depot. He was mopping around. But I was, I was like working almost, you know. Like a little bit of pee comes out because you're holding it in. And I'm not trying to piss in my pants at work. Never that. He like, was mopping right now. He's like this fucking guy. But look at my. Uh, slot machine shirt. The one I got from uh, Salvation Army. I'm wearing it today. I'll show you later. I hate the rain. Right now I want to go running. It's gonna rain. Perfect running weather, but they said it's gonna start raining around two o'clock by where I live. And I get off a little bit before that, so I'm gonna start running around that time. So. It's going smooth. I like working in the morning. I ain't gonna lie. It's way better. The first hour, the store's not even open. They don't even get busy till like probably right now. So, I'm gonna tell Lady A. When that morning, shit.
shift opens up, I want it. Let me tell her. I was taking a whiz, taking a pee, taking a piss. I thought it was funny. There was a guy next to me taking a piss. It's always weird. Like, don't look at my dick. Don't look at my dick. <laughs> but um, I um, I thought, isn't it funny? Every time a man takes a piss, he has his dick in his hand. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> I like to be outside, you know? I like to have my back against like a corner and be able to see. I'm noticing that right now. Like, there's like this little bench right there, but there's just a hill behind me and I can see the whole parking lot. Maybe subconsciously that's what I do, but I know I like to be outside because if I'm in, you know, the break room, people are gonna feel stuff off me, whether it be the sensitivity when I look at them in the eye. They're gonna feel like a little weird uh, sexual thing in me or, you know, from the experiences I had as a little child, you know, the premature experiences of sexual emotions, I would say. Um, that, and also maybe if my aggression, my level of aggression, um, also, maybe I might get a trigger and be like a little feral shit. They know everything about me. They know this about me. They know that about me. Just don't want to intimidate nobody, you know, unintentionally. Don't really want to talk too much, you know. You tend to talk too much when you start talking to people. And you get caught up in your emotions. It could be one word or a story being told to you, something you hear, something you say. You know, so that's why I like to be outside. It's also more fresh air. But... Uh, yeah, just what I struggle with. And also, that, that beautiful 22-year-old girl right here, beautiful girl, like, probably comes from, like, I don't know, like, her dad or grandpa or from the hood or something. Like, I I, I went on, I came out of the break room to come outside to take my lunch, and either she was walking to the restroom or something. For me, because my lack of confidence, there was another co-worker of ours, an older lady in front of her. I really wanted to keep talking to her, like, just like she she wasn't she wasn't as uh, interested in me as other times. Uh, I'm like shy around her kind of. She probably just thinks I'm lame. Maybe she sees something she don't like. You know that's what happens. Maybe it could be this funny ass Las Vegas shirt I'm wearing. I want to show you guys. I don't know. It could be the way I work. I move. I walk real fast. You know. I work real fast. They probably think I'm weird. You know. Maybe some of her coworkers think I'm weird, I don't know. Would it be weird if I just straight up asked somebody like, hey, you're not looking for no boyfriend, are you? Why, you know? That's a conscious decision that a man makes to hold down a woman, you know? It could be as simple as like, I want you as my lady, you know? Yeah, it's the Las Vegas shirt I got from the Salvation Army. I'm missing a button. I didn't notice. Probably could have got it for cheaper. But it was like four bucks. I got three shirts in those uh, white Converse. Size 11. For like 19 something. Yeah, when I come back, my co-worker took his break when I was supposed to go on my lunch. So I went on my lunch like, 20, 30 minutes a little later. And after I come back, I got about three hours left to work. Still dreading it, how it's gonna be when I get home or to my to my folks' house. You know, it's an ugly feeling, man. And I don't know, hear her talking shit or whatever. I'm gonna just get my lunch ready tonight because I have to work the same schedule tomorrow. I'm gonna just do my lunch tonight so that way I don't make no noise tomorrow. Just get up and fucking leave, you know? I haven't brushed my teeth. I'm going to go brush my teeth in the break room right now. About like 10 minutes before I had to clock in. Peace. Did a little stretch right now.
It was an accident, a little bit. We gotta beat this rain that's coming in because I don't think I'll be able to get it running today. And the dreadful moment of all my shit is packed up for me because I can't even live, can't even get up and get ready. But we're not trying to be negative. I had a good day at work. They're actually telling me to do full time. I told him I'll do full time if I can come in in the morning because. I like the morning shifts, man. Look at I'm out right now. I'll open, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't trying to do no full time. They're gonna be bouncing me around, you feel me? And um, I don't know, part of me wants to start paying my dues again and try to get back into the union. But see, I don't really, do, I don't even talk to people. I'm not very social, you know? So I gotta be patient, especially when meeting a woman. I'm pretty shallow, like low key, it kind of fucked me up, you know? The things that happened to me as a kid, because even that 22 year old girl, I still feel like maybe she might be interested in me. But, um. <laughs> but, uh, like, I don't know. It don't seem like she likes to work out or nothing, so. What I'm saying is, like, if I go back to the union, I'm gonna be working around a bunch of dudes. And I'm not even really gonna like be around women. That's why I kind of like working here so I can maybe meet somebody, you know? Cause I don't really do shit, you know? I go exercise and I don't, I don't go to the gym. And a woman wants friends, you know? I kind of got to meet a woman that, I don't know, just wants to just work and go home and be with me, you know? A wife, you know? Something that's just ready just to settle down and be a wife. I guess I had that with my daughter's mom, but I don't know. You gotta live and learn, you know? So. One's probably gonna die. And, uh, but yeah, it was a good day. I like, like I said, I like working in the morning. You know, I'm out right now, and imagine in the summertime, it's gonna be perfect running weather. Supposedly, there's gonna be a storm. I was watching news in the, you know, they always have the news on in the break room. They said, don't underestimate the storm. So, I don't know. I don't doubt it, and it kind of does suck getting caught up in the rain when I go hiking up the hill. It's more colder up there and it's more windy, and uh, so I don't know. I just want to work out, you know. I could take a break, but um, I love the rain, but not when it just disturbs me right now. But yeah, going back to being shallow, it's kind of fucked up, you know. It's a fucked up thing. You gotta get to know somebody, you know, just like them for the, their body, you know? That's a more healthier way to do things, you build, a, build a stronger bond. There's actually a, a female here, I keep telling you guys, but this one seems like a very, I don't know, she actually seems, I don't know, she's very kind and, I never talked about her before. I talked about someone else that's probably similar, but this one's like kind and very sweet and she, uh, she had cut her finger not too long ago not too long ago and uh, all the buses leaving, but it's okay. I'll be another one. It comes often. And she had cut her finger and it had been on my mind to like ask her about it and I seen her today. But she's always tucked off somewhere. I never have to, I never see her after that. She's like, whatever she does, she doesn't walk around as much. She's always kind of on her own. It's a different position and a different like job duty compared to just being like a sales associate or a cashier. They, have to, they do more of the inventory. Anyway, she seems very beautiful. Her spirit seems like she's like wifey, you know? And there was a couple of customers today that I told them they were beautiful. I'm, I'm getting used to saying that to people or females. I got my sandwich, so I'm gonna eat it. Pretty hungry. Peace. It's starting to rain now, so. So as soon as I got off the bus, I uh, I should have walked straight to the bus stop. But when I searched it up again, it said that 
because I could either take the dollar, I mean the quarter bus or the more expensive bus, but I read it wrong. I thought the, it was telling me to take the quarter bus, but I thought I was going to say it comes in nine minutes. And then I seen a girl that got off the same bus as I did to transfer. She started running towards a stop. So it looked like at the corner, she must have seen the bus coming. So now it says a quarter bus comes at the top of the hour which is 30 minutes so now I'm saying fuck it I'm just gonna walk I don't wanna wait it's gonna set me back but I just don't wanna sit there waiting you know it's not raining yet but I've been on my feet all day and these uh, hush puppies Chuck Taylors they don't know my feet just gotta get used to them you know it's the first time I'm wearing them for eight hours straight on a shift. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Fuck it, I gotta walk. It's gonna set me back in like an hour, like I said, but fuck it. This is just advice. For all you people with emotional issues, which is a lot of the people that probably watch my shit, you know? Emotional issues as in You know, I don't know, drug habits. You know, you're like, know yourself. Like, you're not ready to settle down yet. Like, you know, like, uh, I'll probably be fucking around with this girl. And I do like her, but I kind of like other women too, you know, or I don't know. You can't have your cake and eat it too, you feel me? You can't want to just have this person here and be over there fucking... You know, a good woman's gonna want you to just take her serious, which I have no idea if that's the right way, you know? All I'm saying is at least have some control in the relationship, you know? I would say don't, just don't have a kid until you know when you're ready, you know? When you're young, you're not really ready, especially if that's not what you've seen, you know? You didn't come from a, a household of love and it might not even be what you've seen, you know? Like like I said, there's things that are, that are out of your parents' control, you know? Like, oh, damn, I'm a sexual person, you know? I'm not going to be able to be faithful to somebody, so why am I going to get this person pregnant? I'm going to end up being a fucking weekend dad, you know? And this is all popping up in my head because uh, I'm thinking about my child. So I'm just giving you guys advice, like... Like, like right now, I think now, I'm like... I don't even know, like, I don't really have a fucking job, you know? You might not be living your dream, but at least you might have a job that you feel pretty comfortable at, you know? I guess I've always been a customer service type of person, you know? Because customer service, you're not really getting personal with the people, you know? Like I said, I got PTSD and construction is a fucked up thing for me because I got to see the same people every day. And there's not, there's not multiple interactions that kind of uh, occur where... You, you're not stuck in a negative mind frame with another individual. Like I notice, like there's some every day. There's more tension between me and my coworkers than there are between me and just some random stranger I'm just barely meeting. You know, so. But I notice things where like the 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 moments were just the moments me and someone else are together alone are not as a a hawk just flew by me. Are not as a. Uh, they're few and far between, you know. But when you're like in a construction or. Oh, shit, I got to take a piss. I know. Oh, I drink too much fucking water. Oh, shit. Oh, I must piss my pants. But all I'm saying is that. Like, you know, I've noticed there's like me and a couple of co workers were just like kind of like similar in strength and whatever prime and we're same age or whatever whatever they think about me whatever my ptsd fucking makes me feel whatever gauge i got going on but then like uh, uh, someone will just come around the corner and be like hey can you help me with this i need help with this or you know so you got to find where you really belong you know and i think there's people out there that might even struggle more with ptsd i wasn't when i went to the train i was on the train the other day 
going to the west side. If you guys see my vlogs, I was on the train and there was this like crazy person on there. He didn't like nobody getting near him, you know? And that's probably his PTSD, you know, going to prison, you know? Like he, he really didn't want nobody near him. He was, he was like getting offended, like, why you gotta stand next to me? And literally the person wasn't even worried about him, you know? So there is PTSD out there. Not everybody's understanding, you know, so. I just feel maybe it's, I don't know, it's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna have to get with somebody who probably already has kids, you know, single mom, you know. I'll come right here. Yeah, like a single mom, maybe her kids are already older. Like, I'm probably not gonna find a woman until like, I'm like in my 40s, you know? And, uh, someone who's like in their second, you know, divorced woman, you know? One that's kind of like young again, you know? Not one that's like, has little kids and like barely got separated or their kids are very like toddlers and shit, like, that's different. She's different than, a, she's like a woman who knows her responsibilities aren't really there. Kids are all grown up, you know. She might like to go enjoy herself again, go dancing. I don't know, because like I said, I'm like in a weird threshold right now. You know, it's hard for me to really, uh, I need a woman to really want to get to know me. And I haven't found one that's persistent right now. So I don't know. But again, I don't know. That's just on my, my mind. Just if you're young, just go experience and learn yourself. Because there will be a day you wake up and you have a question of what you've done, you know? For some, you really know yourself. So that way, it's like you have the proper, you have the proper, you have the proper pamphlet and instructions to your own life, you know? And how you got to stir your mind and your body. Peace. So I already made it to my folks. He said the bus would have picked me up at a 252. Sorry, 253. I would have still been on the bus. I know my knees are killing me, but I'm still gonna go for my run. In my folks area right here, it looks like it, the rain passed. It still might come, but I'm gonna try to beat the rain. I'm gonna run with this uh, umbrella in my hand. As I'm running, the rain's not really gonna affect me because I'm gonna be warm. But on my way down, that shit gets cold. I'm just walking, so let's see. It's gonna be a good video. Peace. I'm glad I didn't turn around. It was raining down there on the street. At the beginning of the trail, flat ground. It was raining. So I thought up here was gonna be raining. It hasn't rained. It's not as cold as it was the other day when it was raining and it was very windy. So it's like a piece of cake. My legs are tired, so I'm going pretty slow. Below average, but like I said, when it started raining down there, I was gonna maybe cut it short, like only a couple miles. But as I'm glad I didn't. See, it's got opened up a bit. Not to say it's probably not gonna. Not to say it's not gonna rain, but at least not while I'm running. Peace.
clouds are very, very black. Look at these crows. They're waiting for it. They know it's coming, the rain. Look how black these clouds are. I better hurry up. The trip up beyond these clouds is a blue sky, you know? Literally. It's like art. You just take away the layers. <laughs>